Once upon a time, there was... A king! That's what I thought you'd say. No, children, not a king. Once upon a time, there was a piece of wood. It wasn't any special wood, but a simple piece of firewood. The kind that in winter, you put in the stove to light the fire and heat the room. After many adventures that I won't relate to you, this piece of wood fell into the hands of an old woodcarver named Geppetto, who wanted to make a marvelous puppet out of it. A puppet who would know how to dance, wield a sword, and do somersaults. With this puppet, Geppetto planned to tour the world to earn a morsel of bread and a glass of wine. So one day, in his humble little room, Master Geppetto began to carve out his puppet. I just know it's going to be a beautiful puppet. What name shall I give to him? Let's see now. <laughs> How about Pinocchio? Yes, Pinocchio. It's such a beautiful name. But I think it'll bring him good luck. Hmm. The head is uh, just about finished. A final touch to the nose. There, it's done now. Oh, oh, oh. What's going on? Why, it's impossible. If I weren't seeing it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Well, I'll have to take care of that. My goodness, do you want to make me angry? Hmm. Why, you're an ugly and disrespectful nose. You listen carefully now. You grow just one more time, and I'll leave you long like that. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Ah, you're afraid I'll leave it like that. Well, I'll shorten it again, just once more. Well, I think that's it. Yes, now the mouth's done. There. <laughs> hey, stop laughing, do you hear? Oh, stop that laughing, I said. Oh, oh, you really are a little scoundrel. I haven't even finished you yet, and you've already begun to be disrespectful to your father. You know that's very bad. Bad. There, it's done now. <laughs> You're all finished. Mm. Why, where are you going? Stop, Pinocchio, stop! Come back, don't make me angry! The Pinocchio! Come back here! Come back, you rascal! Oh, look at that! Who is that little fellow? He cute. Why, he's made of wood. He looks like a puppet. Oh, <laughs> isn't he adorable? Yes, he's yeah. going yeah. so. oh, to My, my. <laughs> my. Oh, oh. Oh. Here you are, my good man. Oh, thank you so much, Constable. And as for you, Pinocchio, we'll settle this that at home. poor little fellow. Will he get a beating from that mean old Geppetto? That's for sure. If we leave that puppet in his hands, he's capable of breaking it to pieces. Yes, indeed, you're quite right. This calls for immediate action. Hey there, stay where you are. You, young fellow, off you go. As for you, Master Geppetto, aren't you ashamed to treat young children like that? So you were going to break him into little pieces, were you, huh? Of course not, Constable. I, I assure you that I... That's enough now. Come along, to prison. That'll teach you a lesson. So while poor Geppetto was taken to prison, the naughty Pinocchio, not knowing where to go, went back home. Oh. Who is it? It's me. I'm the 
the talking cricket. I've lived in this room here for over a hundred years now. Well, from now on, this room is mine, so get out of here immediately. And you better not return here again. Careful, Pinocchio. You know what happens to children who are disrespectful to their elders and who abandon their loving parents? Huh! Speak all you want, Cricket. It doesn't matter. You see, I'm leaving tomorrow at dawn, because if I stay, I'll have to go to school and study, and I haven't the slightest wish to do that. You little dunce. Then you'd grow up to be an ignorant donkey. Quiet, you evil mouth, Cricket! All right, then learn a decent profession. You know what I say to that? The only profession I want to learn is eating and drinking and sleeping from morning to night. Uh, for your information, those idiots who only follow that profession always finish up in the hospital or in prison. Watch out, Cricket. You'll be in trouble if I lose my temper. Oh, poor little puppet. I'm so sorry for you. It's obvious that you only have a head made of wood. Oh, yes? Hmm. Well, have this then. That's made of wood, too. After this evil deed, Pinocchio began to feel hungry. And so, he started to look for something to eat. He turned the whole house upside down, but was unable to find even a scrap of food. And the more he looked, the hungrier he became. What a predicament. paid dearly for his misbehavior. Starving and cold, he went to sleep with his feet on the foot warmer. But while he slept away, they slipped onto the hot coals. And so, they were badly burned. Fortunately, the next day, Geppetto was released from prison, and he was able to return home. Seeing Pinocchio in such a sad state, he naturally forgave him. Geppetto gave him something to eat, and made him beautiful new feet. Then, he even made him some handsome new clothes, out of paper. Yes, the clothes suit you very well. Thank you, Papa. To pay you back, I promise to become a good boy. I will learn a trade and then become the staff you will lean on in your old age. But to start off, I want to enroll at school right away. Good boy, Pinocchio. But, but to go to school, I, I must have one important thing. And what's that? Uh, why, I need a spelling book. Yes, you're right. How are we going to get one for you? It's very easy. You go to a bookshop and buy one. Yes. And the money? I don't have any. Well, neither do I. Wait, I have an idea. But... But... Papa, what are you doing? You can't go out in this weather. It's snowing outside. It's snowing out there, Papa. Yes, yes, I know. But I'll be right back. Don't you worry. Oh, dear. Poor old Papa. I wonder where he's gone to. He went out in this freezing weather. He might catch pneumonia. Where's your jacket? 
my jacket. Ah, yes. I sold it. You, you sold your jacket? Why? Because I was too hot in it. I know what you did. You sold it in order to buy me a spelling book. Oh, Papa, my dear Papa. The next morning, Pinocchio, full of good intentions, left the house early to go to school. Goodbye, Papa. Mm. Goodbye, my son. Be careful when you cross the streets and work hard. I will. Don't worry, I'll be a model pupil. Poor Papa. He bought me a spelling book, and now he's left in his shirt sleeves, and in this cold weather, too. Oh, yes. Only parents know how to make such great sacrifices. Listen. What's that music? What a pity that I must go to school now. Hmm. Otherwise... Hmm. Well, here's what I'll do. Today I'll go hear the music, and tomorrow I'll go to school. There's plenty of time for school. I'm young. Right up, step right up for the greatest show on earth, the greatest dancers, the greatest musicians, the greatest acrobats, the greatest crowd. You will laugh, you will cry, yes, you will see the seven wonders of the world, the greatest show on earth. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. What's going on? Read the sign there, you'll find out. I'd read it most willingly, but to be honest, I don't know how to read today. What a blockhead. In that case, I'll read it for you. It says... The greatest puppet show in the world. Oh! And how much does it cost to go inside? Just four pennies. Excuse me. Would you lend me four pennies till tomorrow? I would most willingly, but, but to be honest, I can't lend any money today. Well, then could I sell you my new jacket? Ha! Huh, a jacket made of paper. Don't make me laugh. If it rains, it's goodbye jacket. Would you like my new shoes? Sure, they're good for lighting a fire. Well, then, how about my hat, huh? A hat made out of bread. What good is that? Very well, then. Would you give me four pennies for the spelling book? It's new. Listen, I can't do business with you. After all, you're underage. I'll buy the spelling book for four pennies. Here you are. Oh. Thanks. Oh, my. No, no, no! I won't agree to those conditions, absolutely not. No, I won't marry your daughter. She's too old. You promised me two pieces of gold, and now you have to keep your word. Thank you! 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 Look over there, it's Pinocchio! Pinocchio? Why, yes, it's really Pinocchio! Hey, Pinocchio, come here! Nonsense, you hear? What's all this uproar about, huh? Harlequin, he's coming. Oh, dear. The fire eater, the fire eater. Oh! Why did you come here and create such a disturbance in my theater? Answer me. I didn't do anything, oh, kind sir. I didn't do anything. Please don't... That's enough. If my eyes don't deceive me, you're made of wood, aren't you? Doubt if I threw you into the fire, it'll make a nice flame to finish cooking the roast on. Oh, no. Throw him into the fire. Do that. Oh, no, do that. He's our friend. Oh. 
Throw him into the fire. No! No! Oh, no, no! Oh, Papa, please come and save me! Oh, please! Oh, Papa! Oh, no, I don't want to die! Oh, no, have pity! Ah, 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 ah! Shoot! That's a good sign, Pinocchio. The master of the show, the fire eater, has sneezed. And that means that he's beginning to feel a little bit sorry for you. Yes, it's true. The fire eater's very strange sometimes. Instead of crying when he's sad, he sneezes. So now you're safe. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Will you stop that moaning and groaning? Your tears have gone straight to my stomach, and now I'm so hungry I can eat a... Uh, uh, a chew! God bless you, kind sir. Thank you. And your papa and your mama, are they, are they both still alive? My papa, yes. As for mama, I've never known her. Hmm. Who knows what a tragedy it would have been for your old father if I had really thrown you into those burning coals there. Hmm. Poor old fellow. I feel sorry for him. Ah, 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 achoo! God bless you. Thank you. However, you ought to feel sorry for me, too, because I haven't any more wood to finish roasting that mutton. Wait a second. That means that instead of you, I'll have to burn one of the other puppets in my company. Hey, officers! Take Harlequin and throw him into the fire. I want my mutton to be well roasted. Oh, 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 please don't. No, 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 no. Have pity, Mr. Fire Eater. How dare you call me, mister? Please have mercy, Your Honor. How dare you call me, Your Honor? Please have pity, Your Excellency. How dare you call me, Your Excellency? Have pity, Your, your Highness. Oh, that's better. What do you want from me? I beg of you to have pity on my dear friend Harlequin. Pity? What good is pity? If I've spared you, I have to burn him instead because I like my mutton to be well roasted. Oh, in that case, I know what I have to do. Release Harlequin offices. Please take me instead and throw me into the fire. <laughs> Shoot! You're a, a fine boy, a fine boy. Come here and give me a kiss. Then you will spare Harlequin? Oh, yes, yes. I'll spare him. Now, don't worry. This evening, I will eat the mutton only half cooked. Silence! <laughs> now then, tell me, what does your father do for a living? He's a woodcarver. Does he earn lots of money? He earns so much that he's never worth a penny in his pocket. Imagine, in order to buy me a spelling book for school, he had to sell his jacket in freezing weather. The poor devil. I really feel sorry for the fellow. Here then, take these five gold pieces. Go and give them to your father. And also give him my best regards. Ooh, thank you, your highness. After having thanked the fire eater, Pinocchio set out for home, but on the way, he unfortunately met two scoundrels. A cat, who pretended to be blind, accompanied by a wolf, who pretended that he was lame. Oh, kind sirs, have you by any chance seen my father? Yes, yes. And what was he doing? Why, he was working in his shirt sleeves and shivering with cold. Oh, poor Papa. But he won't shiver anymore because I've become a wealthy gentleman, you see. A wealthy gentleman? You? <laughs> He's a wealthy gentleman, you hear that? <laughs> There's no reason to laugh. I'm terribly sorry to make your mouths water. But these, in case you've never seen any, are five pieces of gold. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful indeed. Tell me, uh, how would you like to double them? D -d -d double them? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, it's very simple. Of those five miserable little gold coins, you could make a hundred, a thousand, two thousand. I would like that very much indeed. But how is it done? 
Well, it's really very simple. Instead of returning to your home right now, you have to come along with us. And where do you want to take me? Oh, it's not far. Not very far at all. To the land of the muttonies. Mm, no. No, I'd better not go. I think I'd better return home right now. I'm sure Father's waiting for me. The poor old man. Who knows how he must be suffering? What's more, the talking cricket was so right when he warned me that children who disobey their parents will never come to any good in this world. Bah! In that case, then so much the worse for you. So much the worse for you. Those five gold pieces of yours between this morning and tomorrow could turn into two thousand. Two thousand. But how is it possible? How could it happen? I tell you. You see, I'm sure you must know that in the country of the mutton heads, there's a beautiful field that is named the Field of Miracles. Of Miracles. And you dig a small hole in the field. You bury, for example, one of your gold coins. Gold coins? Then you cover up the little hole and sprinkle it with water. Then you put over it a piece of salt. And then you go off very calmly to sleep. Calmly to sleep. And then the following morning, what do you find there? What do you find there? What do I find there? You'll find there a beautiful big oak tree. Except instead of green leaves, you'll see thousands of pieces of gold growing there. Oh, how wonderful! But is it really true? Why, of course. Of course. Of course it's true. Do I look like someone who tells lies? Of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, what's a decision? If we don't waste time, we can stop for a while at the Inn of the Red Lobster on the way. Well, shall we go, Pinocchio? I guarantee you, you're going to be very rich. easy. It's very simple. Uh, supposing that every one of your gold coins makes 500 gold coins, multiply the 500 by 5, and in the morning you'll find exactly 2,500 gold coins, all bright and shiny. Oh, that's a real miracle. I want to divide it fairly with you. I'll first take 2,000 for me, and I'll give you the other 500. For us? Oh, no, 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 no. No, heaven forbid. <laughs> Heaven forbid. You see, we we don't work for our private interests. We only work to uh, to make our dear friends wealthy. Yes, our friends. <laughs> oh, really? You're both the kindest people I've ever known. I'll never know how to thank you. <laughs> you really think so? No, no, no. Please, you're exaggerating. You're exaggerating. Oh, waiter. What would you gentlemen like? We want two of your finest rooms. One for Master Pinocchio and the other for me and my companion. <laughs> Before we start out again, I think we should have a little stew. <laughs> but please don't forget, my friend, that exactly midnight we would like to be awakened to proceed on our journey. Is that clear? Yes, gentlemen, I'll awaken you. Good. And now, to bed. To bed. <laughs> Pinocchio, I've come to tell you that it's midnight. 
Because the cat had received a message that her oldest kitten was in the hospital with a severe case of pneumonia. Oh, and did they pay for the dinner? Why, of course not. They're both much too polite to insult your excellency in such a way. What a pity, because the insult would have been much more convenient. And where did those friends of mine say they'd wait for me? At the Field of Miracles, in the morning, at the break of sunrise. I haven't a minute to waste. I don't even know how to get to the Field of Miracles. of the talking cricket. The ghost of the talking cricket? And what do you want with me? To give you some advice. Turn back right now and take the money you have left to your poor old father who cries day and night and despairs of ever seeing you again. Listen, cricket. Tomorrow my father will be very wealthy because these four pieces of gold here are going to turn into 2,000. Oh, no. Don't you believe it, my boy. Those who promise to make you rich overnight are usually madmen, or even worse, swindlers. Pay no attention to them. Turn back. No, I want to go on. The night is very dark. I want to go on just the same. The road is very dangerous. That doesn't frighten me. Remember this, that children who always want to do everything their own way will sooner or later come to regret it. It's the same old story. Well, good night, Cricket. Goodbye, Pinocchio. And may heaven protect you from highway robbers and assassins. Oh, it's really very dark out, but I don't mind. I'm not at all frightened. I don't believe that nonsense about assassins. Assassins are deep. They're all stories to, 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 to frighten little children who want to go out alone at night. And besides, even if I did meet up with assassins, I'd look them in the eye and I'd say, Mr. Assassins, what do you want from me? Well, that'll show them, all right, that they can't joke with me. They'll go about their own business and leave me alone. I can just see them now. A few strong words and those assassins will run off fast enough. And if by chance those assassins are so impolite that they refuse to leave me alone, well, then I'll make quick work of them right there and there. Ah! Why, I think I'm being followed. What if it turns out to be assassins? Where, where can I hide the gold coins? I think I'll hide them in my mouth.
your money or your life. Or your life. <laughs> Give us your money or you're dead. Or you're dead. <laughs> After we murdered you, we're going to murder your father. Your father. <laughs> You're hitting them in your mouth, eh? Spit them out! Spit them out! <laughs> and so Pinocchio, still pursued by the assassins, ran for many miles through woods and fields until daybreak. Of course, he was not familiar with that part of the country. So he raced in one direction, then another. He even retraced his steps and ran in circles to try to lose his pursuers. But no matter which way he ran, they were hot on his heels until the following morning. Pinocchio knocked and knocked in vain and begged them to open the door. The fairy with the dark blue hair who lived in the house wanted to punish Pinocchio for his mischievousness and disobedience. So Pinocchio was caught again by the robbers who, to make him open his mouth, hung him from the highest branch of a big oak tree which was nearby. Meanwhile, a violent wind from the north had arisen which blowing and bellowing angrily swung the poor puppet back and forth, just like the clapper of a bell ringing for a celebration. Pinocchio, by now, felt himself near his end. But the fairy with the dark blue hair took pity on him and decided to save him, and had him carried inside her house. There. Better drink this medicine. In a few days, you'll feel a lot better. Is it bitter or sweet? It's bitter, but it's good for you. If it's bitter, I don't want it. Now, you just drink that medicine. But I don't like anything bitter. If you drink it, afterwards, I'll give you a little sugar. No. First, I want the sugar, and then I'll drink the medicine. Oh, very well. Here's the sugar. It's delicious. If only the sugar were a medicine, I wouldn't mind taking it every day. And now you must keep your promise. Go on, drink the medicine. Oh, I can't drink it that way. Look, uh... Why not? Because, um, uh, because that cushion on my knee is bothering me. Oh, really? All right. There, it's gone now. Oh, it's no use. I just can't drink this medicine. Now, now, what else is bothering you? Why, uh, why, uh, the door of the room there is open. Oh, yes. Hmm. There, see how I try to please you? Uh, I simply can't drink this medicine. No, no, and no. If you don't drink it, you will die. Aren't you afraid of dying? I think I would rather die than drink that medicine. All right, if that's how it is. Ooh. Oh, those creatures! What do they want? We've come to take you away with us. Take me away? But why? I'm not dead yet. Mm, it's just a matter of time. Without the medicine, in a few minutes, you'll be dead for sure. Oh, fairy godmother, where's the medicine? Please give it to me. I don't want to die now. Oh, please, I'll drink it all down. Oh. oh. They're going away. The rabbits are going away. 
Oh, little fairy, the rabbits have gone away now. And I, and I, I, I'm completely cured. Look, look. After having taken the medicine, Pinocchio was totally cured and began to tell the fairy with the blue hair all his horrible adventures. Needless to say, he made them sound even more horrible than they were by well, exaggerating a great deal. Short. Those two assassins hung me upside down from a tree to steal the four gold pieces I had left. Poor little Pinocchio. Now tell me, what have you done with those four gold pieces? Why, I lost them all. Oh, I see. And where? Uh, in the woods just near here. Oh, is that so? <coughs> but, but on second thought, maybe uh, I swallowed them down with a medicine. <coughs> Why, look, look. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, I'm laughing at the heaps of lies you've been telling. And how do you know I've been telling you heaps of lies? Well, it's very simple. Lies are very easy to recognize because there are two kinds of lies. There are lies that have short legs and lies that have long noses. And yours, it's very obvious, are the kind that have long noses. <laughs> Forgive me, please, Fairy Copper. I won't tell you lies anymore. <laughs> I, I beg you, please, make this big nose of mine go away, and I'll be good. I promise you, Honest. Very well. I'll forgive you for telling lies this time. But I'm warning you, I don't want to hear any more lies. Understand? <laughs> yes, little fairy, I won't lie anymore. Never, never. Never. <laughs> I wish I could tell you how much I love you. And I love you very much, too. And if you want, you can stay here with me always. Oh, I'd stay willingly. But my poor old papa... I've thought of everything, and your father has already been notified and will be here very soon. Oh, really? Oh, how wonderful. Well, in that case, may I go ahead to meet him? I can't wait to be able to give a kiss to that poor old man who has suffered so much for me. Go ahead. But do be careful not to lose your way. Follow the path through the forest without going off it for any reason whatever. Only that way will you be able to meet your father. Remember that. Don't worry, little fairy. I'll be careful. Goodbye, fairy godmother. But of course, as you can imagine, Pinocchio did not keep his promise. He went off the path through the forest to take a shortcut. And so, instead of meeting his father, Geppetto, he met once again the cat and the wolf. Oh, our dear friend Pinocchio, what brings you here? What brings him here? Well, it's a very long story, my friends. I'll tell it to you some other day. Right now, I have to go and meet my father, Geppetto, who was on his way here. And where are your pieces of gold? Oh, they're still here in my pocket, except for the one that I spent at the Inn of the Red Lobster. And to think that instead of four miserable little coins, tomorrow you could easily have more than a thousand, mm. maybe two thousand. Mm. Why don't you listen to my good advice? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go and plant them in the field of miracles? I can't this morning. I'll do it another day. Oh, another day would be much too late. Yes, much too late. Why? Because, you see, that field has been bought by a very powerful lord, and starting tomorrow, no one will be able to get permission to plant their coins there. Well, in that case, then, tell me, is it very far to the Field of Miracles? Oh, no, it's close by. It's right here on the outskirts of the village of Martinhead. Of Martinhead? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, if another day would be too late, then, mm -hmm. in that case, Let's go there right away. It just means I'll see my father when I come back to the house of the Blue Fairy. That's 
Fine, mm. fine, mm. fine, dear Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. That's enough. Mm -hmm. Now, put inside the hole <laughs> all your gold coins <laughs> and cover up the hole. And cover up the hole. Is that all right? Mm, perfect, yes. Mm. Perfect. Why, I tell you, it's a regular work of art. Mm. A work of art. Well, and now what do we do? Dear little Pinocchio, there's nothing to do now but wait. Each of us goes about his own business in his own little way. Then all you do is come back here in about 20 minutes and you'll find that all the branches are full of pieces of gold. Full of pieces of gold. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. How wonderful. Then I'll give you each a present. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want any presents, no. Because it's enough for us to have taught you the way to get rich without any effort. And that gives us all the presents we want. Goodbye, Pinocchio. Goodbye, Goodbye. Pinocchio. Goodbye, dear friends. Goodbye. And may heaven repay you. Pinocchio went off to the nearby village and began to count the minutes impatiently. Meanwhile, he daydreamed about the moment when he would return to the field of miracles to collect all the gold pieces which he would find on the branches of the magic tree, which according to the prediction of the cat and the wolf, would spring up shortly. He dreamed of hundreds of gold pieces, then thousands, then millions. There was no end to his imagination. Dear, when you're in a hurry, time never seems to pass. What's the matter? In a little while, I'll be very rich. Who knows how many gold coins I'll find there? And if instead of 2,000, I were to find 5,000, or even 100,000, oh, I'd be the richest man on earth. Hmm. I could then buy a great palace, thousands of toys, a cellar full of wines, and a big cupboard stuffed full of goodies. Custard pies, chocolate cakes, and cream puffs. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's noon already. Time to go. Ah. Who knows how much gold I'll find? Now, now, courage! Oh! Is it possible that the magic tree hasn't sprouted the money yet? Maybe it needs a little more water? Disrespectful creature, may I ask what you're laughing at? I'm laughing at those rotten heads who believe all the nonsense they're told and who are cheated. <laughs> By crafty scoundrels. <laughs> are you speaking of me? Yes, who else? I'm speaking of you, poor Pinocchio, who is so foolish and gullible as to believe that money can be planted and can grow like rows of corn. Explain that, would you? Haven't you understood yet that while you were away, the captain, the wolf, came back here, they stole all your pieces of gold that were buried in the hole there, and have run away like the wind? It would take a world champion to catch those scoundrels. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. Two such fine people, two such dear friends. I can't believe it. It's not possible. <laughs> Money is in 
After having been robbed because he refused to listen to the good advice of the talking cricket, Pinocchio had several other dreadful adventures. And in the end, tired and discouraged, he decided to go back to the Blue Fairy to ask her forgiveness. But an ugly surprise awaited him. The house of the Blue Fairy was no longer there. right over here. Is it possible it's not here anymore? Little fairy! Little fairy! Oh! Oh! Here lies the fairy with the blue hair. She died of sorrow after being abandoned by Pinocchio. Oh! Little fairy! Fairy godmother! Tell me that it isn't true! Tell me that you're not really dead. Oh, please answer me. <laughs> Fairy Godmother, why have you died? Why isn't it me that's dead instead? Because everyone knows that I'm so bad. But you, you were so wonderful. <laughs> and, and my poor old father, where is he now? I'm nobody anymore. What will I do alone and abandoned? <laughs> If you love me, come back to life again, please. Come back and be as you were before. Don't you see that I'm all alone and abandoned by everyone? <laughs> hey there, little boy. Who's that calling me? It's me, a little dove. Tell me. Have you by chance among your acquaintances a little puppet named Pinocchio? Pinocchio? You said Pinocchio? But I am Pinocchio. Then no doubt you also know Geppetto. Oh, why, of course I do. Geppetto's my father. But tell me, have you any news? Is Geppetto alive? Did he speak about me? Oh, please answer me for pity's sake. I left him just three days ago along the beach. Geppetto was building a little boat to go search for you across the ocean. Oh, my poor papa. Tell me, how far away from here is that beach? Oh, over a thousand miles. Oh, a thousand miles? Oh, if only I could buy a pair of wings like yours. If you like, I could take you over there. Oh, but how? You could ride on my back. Are you very heavy? Heavy? Me? No, not at all. I'm as light as a feather. And so the dove, with Pinocchio riding on her back, flew all day and night. And they crossed many countries, where people spoke many different languages. But Pinocchio was too distressed to show interest in them. Finally, as dawn broke, the dove set Pinocchio down on a rock right on the shore. Unfortunately, Geppetto had already set sail in his tiny boat, while a storm rose furiously over the sea. Pinocchio had courageously thrown himself into the stormy sea in an attempt to save his father Geppetto. But unfortunately, he didn't succeed in finding him. 
After many hours of being tossed about, Pinocchio was thrown up by the waves onto the beach of an island, where there was a city called the City of the Busy Bees. Pinocchio reached the city towards noon. He was very tired, but above all, he was very hungry and very thirsty. Could I possibly have a drink of that water? Why, of course. Have all you like. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was good. I'm not thirsty anymore, but I'm hungry. Oh, yes, I'm starving. Well, if you help me carry home one of these jugs of water, I'll give you a big piece of bread. Mm. And I'll also give you a nice plate of cauliflower with a cheese sauce. And after that, I'll give you a beautiful dessert made of nuts and raisins. Oh, well, well, I guess I will carry the jug of water to your house. Oh, now then, did you enjoy the meal I gave you? I'll say. It was as delicious as the meals that were made for me by... That were made for me by... Oh. Why, what are you staring at? It's your hair. It's your hair. It's dark blue. Yes, unusual, isn't it? Yeah. You look like... You remind me of... Oh, yes, yes. The, the same voice and the same dark blue hair, even the face. You're just like her. Oh, little fairy, my fairy godmother. You, I know it. Oh, don't make me cry anymore. If you only knew how much I've cried. You dear little creature, so you know who I am. Oh. Yes, and it's only because I love you that I recognized you. And now that I've found you, I'll never leave you again. Never, never. I'll always stay with you. Only... What is it? Well, it's just that if you only knew how tired I am of always being a puppet and not growing anymore. If I only knew how to become a real little boy, just like all the others. You could become one, only you must deserve it. Oh, really? And what must I do to become a real boy? You would have to learn to behave like a good little boy. Oh, that's easy. I can behave if I want to. It's not that easy. To begin with, a good little boy is very obedient. Yes, I am disobedient, it's true. And then good little boys always tell the truth. Whereas you... Well, I do tell white lies now and then. And good boys must be willing to go to school. Oh, but, but school gives me a headache. I find it so boring. Oh. Oh, all right. From now on, I'll change my ways. You promise? Yes, I promised you. But I'm only doing it for you and for my father. He wanted that so badly, the poor old man. Where can he be right now? Ah, uh, who knows? Do you think that I'll be able to see him again one day? Of course. Of course. One day you're sure to see him again. Do you really mean it? Oh, thank you, little fairy. You're so good to me, almost like a... Almost like a real mother. May I call you mama? Why, yes, of course. Of course, little puppet. Mama. Oh, so it wasn't really true that you were dead. It doesn't seem so. If you only knew how sad I was when I read Here Lies... I know. It's because of your true feelings that I forgave you and wanted you to find me. And it's because of that, from now on, I'll be your mother. Oh, how wonderful! Pinocchio started out to keep his promises. He went to school and became the best pupil in the class. Unfortunately, however, one day he let himself be persuaded by some of his schoolmates to play truant. And during a quarrel, one of them was hurt. 
Pinocchio tried to help him, while the others ran away. Two policemen who were passing, thinking it was Pinocchio who had hurt the boy, arrested him. Pinocchio succeeded in escaping, but the policeman had him followed by a ferocious bulldog called Alidoro. Thank you. You saved my life. And in this world, one good turn deserves another. You'll see at the very first opportunity, I'll pay you back for what you did. And so Pinocchio, after having saved Alidoro, returned to the sea and began to swim in the direction of a cave in the hope of finding refuge and a place to dry his clothes. Now, let's have a look and see what kind of fish I've managed to catch today. Mmm. These whitings are very good indeed. Oh, wonderful, lovely little sardines. Ooh, why? And what kind of fish can this be? Please let me go, sir. You see, I'm not a fish. No? I understand. You're some kind of sea urchin. No, no, not at all. I'm really a puppet. Oh, oh, nonsense. I never knew that there existed fish puppets in the sea. That means today I'm going to eat something new. You're going to eat me? But don't you understand, sir? I'm not a fish. Don't you hear that I can speak and reason like you? That's true enough. Yes, indeed. Now, now, you must oh, 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 oh. Now listen, because you're so nice, I'll, I'll fry you in a pan, all right? Oh. Believe me, to be fried in pleasant company is always a great consolation. <laughs> ah. You're afraid, huh? There, there, you'll see it'll all be over in a couple of minutes. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that smells delicious. Oh, may I please have a taste of what you're frying? I haven't eaten for days. Oh. Ali Doro. Go away, you ugly creature. There's nothing here for you. Ali Doro, help me, please. You must save me or I'm fried. Yo, what are you doing here? Save me, please, Ali Doro. The green fisherman thinks I'm actually a fish. And he wants to fry me in a frying pan. What? You in a frying pan? I'll take care of that. Don't worry. <laughs> Go away, you wretched beast. Go away, I said. <laughs> Give me back my little fish. Oh. Oh, you horrible dog! Give him back immediately! 
Come back! This instant! Oh, Ali Doro, my friend, I can never thank you enough. Well, didn't you save me? And one good turn deserves another. But how did it happen you were in the cave? It's simple. After you left me there on the beach, more dead than alive, the wind brought me such a lovely odor of frying fish, and it gave me such a great appetite that I had to follow it. It's just as well, too, because if I'd come there a minute later... Ooh, don't even think about it. I would certainly be all fried, eaten, and digested now. After this unpleasant adventure, Pinocchio returned once again to the Blue Fairy to ask her forgiveness, as fairies always forgive. He promised not to displease her again, and studied so hard that he again became the best pupil in the whole school. The Blue Fairy was so happy with him that she decided to give him some wonderful news. The next day, he was finally to become a real boy. And to celebrate the event, there was to be a big party with hot chocolate and whipped cream and slices of bread buttered on top, underneath, and even on the sides. Pinocchio went off around the town to invite his schoolmates. In particular, he wanted to invite one of his friends called Lucignolo, whom he was very fond of. and so far from your house. I'm waiting for midnight so I can leave. Oh, and where are you going? Far away. Well, it's lucky that I found you. Do you know the great news? Tomorrow I stop being a wooden puppet and become a real little boy like you. Congratulations. To celebrate, I'm giving a party. I'd expect you then for lunch at noon at my house. No, no, I can't. I told you I have to leave in a little while. But where are you going? To the most beautiful country in the world. It's really fantastic. Good heavens, and what's that wonderful country called? Everyone calls it simply Toyland. Why don't you come with me? Me? No, I couldn't. Well, you're making a big mistake. Where can you find a country better than that? There aren't any schools or any teachers or books. I tell you, you'll never have to study. But then what is one supposed to do all day long in a country like Toyland? What a stupid question. We play with our toys from morning till night. Well, it does sound like a very exciting country, except that... Then come along with me. You'll have the time of your life. What do you say? No, no. You see, I promised my fairy godmother that I would become a good little boy. Well, I'll see you then. Goodbye. Oh, wait another two minutes, will you? But it's getting very late. The fairy is waiting for me. Two minutes, that's all. What if the fairy calls for me? Let her call all she likes. She'll soon stop. Tell me, are you leaving alone? Of course not. There'll be more than a hundred of us. At midnight, a fine coach will come along by here to pick me up, and it's going to take us all along to Toyland. Oh, I would so love to see all of you as you start out. Stay a little while and you will. No, no. I'd better get going. The fairy will be worried. But what has the fairy got to be afraid of? That the bats are going to eat you? Mm, say, are you really sure that in Toyland there are no books or schools? Absolutely. And not even teachers? Not even one. What a wonderful place. Well, I'll see you. Have a good journey. Oh, wait. Look. Down there, there's a light. <laughs> do you hear that? That's the coach that's coming to take me to Toyland. Now, do you want to come, yes or no? Make up your mind. But is it really true that in Toyland you don't ever have to study? No, never, never, I told you. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, what a great place. Come on, let's go. Oh, look at all those donkeys. How beautiful. Aren't they cute? Just look. There are so many. And that fine coach. <laughs> Come on, let's well, go. I'll get going. Goodbye. We're waiting for you. 
The coach is very crowded now. There isn't any more room up there. That's all right. I'll stay down here on the cart pole. And you? Aren't you coming with us? No, I'm staying. I want to go to school and learn a tree. Well, goodbye and good luck to you. Come on, come along, the guys. Come on, Pinocchio, hop on. You'll never get another chance like this in your whole life. Don't make us beg you, but what will the blue fairy say? Listen, will you make up your mind? Are you coming or not? If you want to join us, you have to decide right now. And if not, goodbye. Oh, very well, I'll go with you. There's no room up here. Where are you going to sit? Right on one of the donkeys. Ali, up. Come on, let's go. He's a very bad companion and can only show you how to get into mischief. <laughs> oh, he never liked me because I talked in class, but I'm very generous and I forgive him. What a kind soul. You really are worthy of my affection and friendship. Wow. This beautiful dream world lasted for four months, during which Pinocchio and Lucignolo couldn't have enjoyed themselves more. But one morning, Pinocchio woke up to a nasty surprise. A surprise which made him very unhappy, as you shall see. Oh! oh. Open up, Lucignolo! Open up for pity's sake! Lucignolo! Oh, Pinocchio, come in. Well, what is it? Tell me, do, do you feel well? Me? Uh, yes, I feel wonderful. But, but are you really sure? Of course. Why should I tell you one thing if I mean another? Well, in that case, I'd like to know why you're wearing that silly thing on your head. Well, you see, it's like this. Uh, the doctor thought I ought to wear it because I hurt my knee. 
But, uh, but, uh, anyway, why are you wearing that silly thing on your head? Me? Oh, yes. Because the doctor said that I ought to wear it because I had hurt the left toe. Listen, Lucignolo, would you answer me one question? Have you ever suffered from an illness of your ears? Never. And you? Well, uh, you see, this morning I've had a... To tell you the honest truth, I've had a pain in my ears. Well, me, I... Tell you the truth, I have a pain in my ears, too. Listen, would you do me a favor? Could I just have a look at your ears? Of course you can, but first of all, you have to let me look at yours. No, no, first I want to look at your ears and... No, no, nothing doing. First I see uh, yours or nothing. Oh, very well. Let's do it this way. I'll count to three, and, and then at the count of three, we'll both take our hats off together. Agreed? Very well, I agree. All right, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. One, two, three. Luchignolo! Pinocchio! <laughs> if you could see your, <laughs> your ears, they're just like donkey ears. How <laughs> have you do? They're so long! <laughs> you know what you look like. <laughs> you look to me like a little jackass. <laughs> and you too! <laughs> to me, you look like... <laughs> like the winner of a long ear contest. <laughs> <laughs> oh... the coachman was. He was a scoundrel who lured little children into Toyland, waited for them to become donkeys, and then sold them in the marketplace. Thus, the donkey Lucignolo was sold to a farmer to turn his water wheel. And the donkey Pinocchio was sold to the director of a circus, who wanted to make him jump and dance with the other animals of the troupe. <laughs> Now our trained donkey Pinocchio is going to jump through the circle! Wee -ah. Wee -ah. Wee -ah. Go on! Go on! Jump, you idiot! Go on! So much for Pinocchio's circus career. The accident left the donkey Pinocchio lame. And so he was sold to a maker of drums, who wanted to drown him in order to remove his skin and make a drum out of it. But after Pinocchio was thrown into the water, the blue fairy, who always protected him, turned him back into a puppet. And so Pinocchio succeeded in escaping from the drum maker and set off to swim towards the open sea. At a certain point, he noticed a rock on which he found a mysterious goat of a beautiful dark blue color. Why, what's that? <laughs> Pinocchio! Please hurry! For pity's sake! Oh, look at that! There's a goat in the middle of the sea, but his hair is all blue, just like my blue fairy. Quickly, Pinocchio, quickly! There's an enormous sea monster who has seen you and wants to eat you up. A sea monster, did you say? Where is it? Ma, Quickly, Pinocchio! Quickly! Oh, my goodness! Look out, Pinocchio! The monster's right behind you! Watch out! Watch out! How dark it is inside here! I must really be inside the belly of that terrible sea monster! Help! Help! Isn't there anyone who can come and rescue me? 
Who do you think can rescue you, you silly fellow? Who? Who said that? I said it. A poor tuna fish who was swallowed by the sea monster, the same as you. And what kind of fish are you? I'm not any kind of a fish. I'm really a puppet. But tell me, what can we do to save ourselves? What do you expect us to do then? Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do except wait patiently until the sea monster has eaten us and completely digested us. But I don't want to wait until I'm digested. Well, I don't want to either. But you see, I'm being very philosophical. And I believe that when you're born a tuna fish, it's more dignified to die in water than in frying oil, isn't it? Yes, but I want to try to get out of here. I must get out of here, I tell you. Well, try to escape if you can. Oh, down there. Look, I think I see a light. Yes, you're right. What do you think it could be? Well, no doubt it's another poor victim of the sea monster, and he's waiting just like us to be eaten and digested. Listen, excuse me for leaving you, but I want to see what that light is. You never know. Goodbye, tuna fish. Goodbye, puppet. And may luck be with you. So while the sea monster continued its journey through the depths of the sea, Pinocchio was wandering inside its enormous stomach. And finally, after a long while, he reached the place from which the light was coming. You will never guess whom he saw there. Cold eyes telling me the truth. Is it possible that you're my dear little Pinocchio? Yes, 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 Papa, it's me. And you've forgiven me, haven't you? Oh, Papa, Papa, if you only knew how many horrible things happened to me because I disobeyed you. But now, I'll never make you unhappy anymore. But you, Papa, how long have you been inside the sea monster? Oh, it must be two years now. Two whole years? And how were you able to survive here for such a long time? Oh, you see, my son, the very same storm that shipwrecked my little sailing boat also shipwrecked a merchant ship that was close by me. The, the sailors were all safe, thank heavens, but the ship went down to the bottom, and it too was swallowed up by the terrible sea monster with all the cargo it was carrying. You mean the ship was swallowed one mouthful? Yes, all in one mouthful. However, the sea monster spit out the mainmast because it got stuck between his teeth. How terrifying! But fortunately, inside the merchant ship was all you could ask for. Cases of biscuits, bottles of wine, all sorts of cheeses, and, and so many other things, including candles and boxes of matches. But now we've reached the end of the supplies. All we have left is this little piece of candle. And, and when it's all burned out, we'll be left completely in the dark. Well, then, Papa, there's no time to lose. We must escape. Escape, you say? But how? We'll work our way up to the mouth of the sea monster and jump into the sea. Oh, Pinocchio, that's all right for you because you're made of wood, but I don't know how to swim and I'll sink right to the bottom. Don't worry, Papa. You can get up on my shoulders and I'll carry you to safety. Hurry, we better go now. But do you think it's possible? We'll never make it. In that case, Papa, we'll at least have the consolation of dying together. Be brave, Papa. The sea monster will be sleeping for a few hours yet, but we haven't any time to waste. In the middle of the night, while the sea monster was sleeping on the surface of the water, with its mouth open because it suffered from asthma, Pinocchio and Geppetto succeeded in escaping by jumping into the sea. And luckily, by following their example, the tuna fish that Pinocchio had met inside the sea monster also succeeded in escaping. And with his help, they managed to reach the shore safe and sound. 
When Pinocchio and Geppetto reached land, it was already day. They set off in search of someone who might offer them a crust of bread and a place where they could sleep. Don't despair, Papa. You'll see. Somebody will give us shelter. Pinocchio, my dear old friend. My dear old friend. Well, who do I see? Oh, Pinocchio, give a little charity to two poor wretched invalids. Wretched invalids. Mm. Serves you right, you imposters. You cheated me once, but I tell you, you're not going to cheat me anymore. Oh, believe us, Pinocchio. Today we really are poor and sick and tired. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. If you are poor, then you deserve to be. Remember the old proverb that says, stolen money will never bear fruit. Oh, please, please have pity on us. Please don't abandon us. Oh, please don't abandon us. <laughs> Goodbye, you two thieves. And just you remember the other proverb that says, he who steals the jacket from his neighbor usually dies without even a shirt. <laughs> The door is open. But there's no one here. But I'm positive I heard a voice. Uh, hello there. Isn't anyone here? I'm up here, Pinocchio. Oh, it's my friend, the talking cricket. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, well, now you call me a friend, the talking cricket, do you? Have you already forgotten when you chased me out of your house and threw the hammer at my head? Yes, you're right, cricket. Now you can chase me out and throw a hammer at my head. <gasps> Please take pity on my poor papa. <laughs> I will take pity on your poor father and also on his son, but I wanted to remind you of your cruel behavior and let it serve as a lesson and teach you that whenever you're able, you must be courteous and considerate of others. If you expect to receive the same courtesy and consideration, especially in your hours of great need... Oh, yes, you're so right, little cricket. And I'll keep that lesson in mind forever. Thanks to the little talking cricket, who was the owner of the little cottage, Pinocchio was able to settle down well and prepare a bed for his tired old father. Later, Pinocchio, in order to get Geppetto a glass of milk, thought of going to visit a farmer. Well, now, how much do you want? Just one glassful. Well, a whole glassful of milk costs a penny. Give me the penny and I'll give you the milk. Oh, but I... I haven't any money at all. Well, my fine little friend, if that's the case and you have no money, you have no milk either. Oh, dear. Now, wait a second. Let's see if we can work this out. Do you feel like turning the water wheel? I don't know. What is it? There it is. It's used for bringing up the water for watering the vegetables. Except the donkey that was doing that work is very sick and going to die. A poor creature. All right, now. Are you willing to do it? Well, I can try. You've got nothing to lose, and if you succeed in bringing up a hundred buckets of water, I'll give you a glass full of milk to reward you. A hundred? Pinocchio, full of goodwill, set himself to turn the water wheel with all his might, and finally managed to bring up the hundred buckets of water. But naturally, to Pinocchio, they seemed a thousand. I recognize it. Why, yes. 
I know I've seen that face somewhere. Tell me, who are you? I'm... Uh, I'm Luciniolo. Luciniolo? My poor old friend. Tell me, how do you feel? Answer me. He's dead now. He can't answer you. Forgive me, but you can talk to donkeys? Of course. He was a friend of mine. Oh, he was a friend of yours. Yes, he was a schoolmate of mine. What? <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard. So you had donkeys for schoolmates, did you? <laughs> well, I can just guess what a clever student you were. All right, now, take the milk. You earned it. Yes, indeed. You're a strange little boy, very strange, but you're a good boy nevertheless. For many months, Pinocchio continued to get up every morning at dawn to go turn the water wheel and earn that glass of milk which did so much good for his old father's health. Then he learned to make beautiful baskets of reeds, which he sold. And with the money he earned, he bought all the things he and his poor father needed. As time passed, he built a rolling chair to take Geppetto out for walks on sunny days. In fact, Pinocchio became a really model son. In fact, besides studying all day without ever taking a rest, he spent long hours working in the evening. One evening, Pinocchio worked very late to finish a large number of baskets. But in the end, no longer able to overcome his tiredness, he fell into a deep sleep. My dear Pinocchio, my good Pinocchio, well done. To reward you for your kind heart, I forgive you for all the unkind things you've done in the past. Children who work hard and help their tired aging parents in their illnesses and in their unhappiness always deserve great praise and great affection. Continue to be kind and make other people happy, and you'll be happy too. Farewell, my dear Pinocchio. And all thanks to you, my son. It was your goodness and also your hard work that brought about these changes. Oh, Papa, I don't deserve all that. Papa, where is the old wooden Pinocchio gone to end his days? Would you like to see him? Oh, yes, I would. There he is. <laughs> you mean that was me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How funny looking I was. Yes, it's true, you were funny looking. But I always loved you no matter how you looked. You see, when you truly love someone, the way they look isn't 
isn't so important. Yes, you're so right, Papa dear. And so ends the story of Pinocchio the puppet, and so begins the story of Pinocchio the boy.